those who support Ken Ofreata are saying that the new patriotic party has not particularly helped the finance minister to be able to achieve, you know. You know? So they talk about post-2020. Going into 2020, the MPP had a huge majority in parliament. So the election was presidential and parliamentary. So the MPP went into the presidential election with their candidate, Akufuado, and then the NDC went, and then the MPP also went to the election with their parliamentarians. The parliamentarians returned the verdict of losing significant ground to their opponents in parliament so that it is a deficit of 40 something now became equal that's the first problem that this is having as soon as that happened the opposition and dc took advantage of it then they were talking about okay now it's going to be this okay so we we'll see how you pass your budget we'll see how the, because in parliament you need the numbers so right away there was difficulty from 2020 2021 in terms of passing budget and getting little things and it was a whole long term drawn out issue because the parliamentary mpp uh, failed in his quest to be able to sustain his leadership whereas the presidential mpp was able to sustain his leadership and still was able to win a first round straight first round victory uh, over president mahama and the parliamentary mpp were not able to do so it didn't happen okay so then came the the the, the, the coup de grace itself the nail in the coffin on the 9th of 7 January, we were all in Parliament. I was there, everyone was there, and it was a big issue. The Speaker was to be elected. It was obvious that the MPP should be able to cast a vote of 138 for the, the selected Speaker, and that the candidates uh, for the NDC of uh, uh, Mr. Sumanu Kingsford Bagbin should be ending up with 137 on a logical uh, even kill. On a logical even kill, the MPP should be able to get 138, and the NDC will get 137. The MPP would have elected a Speaker. Some members of the MPP cast a vote for the NDC candidate. I'm not sure whether they knew what they were doing to the party, their party, to the country, because the MPP had won the presidency already, so they were going to be in the executive government, and you are a member of the MPP, and you knew these circumstances, and they went in there, and they cast a ballot for Sumanu Kingsford Bagbin. And then the speaker for position, if you like, flipped. And then Mr. Babi became speaker, the NDC speaker. And speaker is the control of parliament. He decides what parliament can discuss and what parliament cannot discuss. When you file a motion, as we are seeing now, the speaker must admit the motion. The speaker does not admit the motion, that's the end of the motion. And, and an ordinary member of parliament cannot bring a motion that way unless two thirds of parliament insist that this is the motion we are bringing and the speaker will do it. You hardly get two thirds of parliament on one side. So the MPP went in and uh, sort of shot themselves in the foot. After losing significant ground to the NDC in parliamentary politics, parliamentary elections of 2020, they again uh, shot themselves in the foot by some of their members, two or three of them, being completely affected by the whole Michael Quay situation. One does not, cannot tell how much you can be affected by a speaker's personality that is your party speaker. You have such a close context in parliament, 138, 137, and then you decide to elect the speaker, Sumanu Kings for Bagby, to teach somebody a lesson. Whose lesson are you teaching? You're teaching lesson, lesson to the nation and all of that. The difficulties we have had in this situation is also because of the split parliament. That's what it is. That's, that's, that's really part of it. And the split parliament is also not giving us even what we want. Yawin Sarko has a post. I, 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 I keep an eye on it. Yawin Sarko's post, I'll be picking it up. So this is what, this is what happened. This is the situation. Of the, this is part of the Ophiata problem. Then he thought about bringing in Ilevi. And Ilevi was to have been passed in November uh, 2021. It took about six months for Ilevi to be passed. In the meantime, other revenue mobilizations, smaller revenue mobilizations like the road tow and all of that had been taken out. Ilevi could not be passed. It could not even be passed in the form that it was originally designed. So you have all sorts of things, you know. So the Ilevi is eventually passed in a certain way. It doesn't generate the revenue. If Ilevi was passed from day one, without all of that, Ophirata was expecting to generate $6 billion of revenue. That's why he was confident that he didn't need the IMF. And, and at that time, the dollar situation was better. If E-Levy had succeeded, this would have been different. But there were those who were, who were focused that E-Levy should not succeed. Not so much that they thought that it was bringing Ghanaian's hardship, but really they thought that it was a political misfortune for them. If E-Levy succeeds, the political opponent succeeds with E-Levy, I don't succeed. So I derail it. You know, so that's, that's the kind of situation that we had here. Now, if you are looking at the Ophirata verdict, you have to consider all of these things, and then now we can actually cast a verdict. So this is, I've showed you, Ophirata 2017, 2018, 2019. Then uh, I've showed you uh, also Kwame PNM's video about 
critical of Oforata. I've showed you the IMF situation. And now we have described the political situation of the NPP, the whole NPP political situation. That is also part of the Oforata problem. Those two members of parliament who went on that night and voted against Michael Quay so that the speaker will be elsewhere, they have questions to answer to themselves. We don't know them. It was a secret ballot, so we don't know them. But that situation was wrong because... The MPP had already won the presidency. So if you wanted to move the country in a certain way in your own party, you don't elect the other speaker. But they did. They couldn't pull up 138 votes, you see. So that created a problem. And then they lost ground in the parliament because their president was winning the election. Okay, so all of this put together, there's also the personality of Oforiata. And uh, people are concerned that this whole issue is not really about performance or non-performance. It's really about his personality. But you have to understand that uh, we have to be tolerant of, uh, of people's disposition. Oferata is different. I mean, those of us who are reporters when his father was a politician, they are very similar. So if you're a reporter those days, you go to Joseph Oferata and you want to interview him. Uh, and I'm talking about Oferata and his contemporaries. J.A. Kofu was his contemporary. Janice Selby Addison, all of them were his contemporaries. So if you go to interview him and you see him, he'll just come and say, uh, young man, you're a journalist from where? Joe FM. What would you like to know? And he'll sit with you and give you the answers. And that's it. That's, that's how he is. And that's how Ken too is. For politicians and politics, we, we want people who are louder, you know, those of us who shout a lot, talk. So I give you another example. My good friend, may he rest in peace, Kwame Amakoto 4. You go to Amakoto 4's house to go and interview him at this Legon, and every journalist really enjoyed going to Amakoto 4's house. He sees you and says, Namu Ghana journalist, no, and Tronkwa, Namu Chocho, Obede, Omifie. That's how he is. And that's politician. You go to Akufado's house to interview, you have a lot more to talk about. John Sofoyata is, he comes as a gentleman, what would you like to ask me? And then he'll give you the answer. He has to give you a document. He'll tell you that he's not ready. His driver will bring it. And his driver will bring it in an envelope. Mark, that's how John Sofoyata was. So that's how Ken is. And the modern politicians expect a guy who is talking to everybody. And he's not, he's not like that. So we have to be tolerant of people's disposition. Because I was talking to an MP today. And he said, Paul, you know what? This whole thing, it's not really about performance. So it's about Ken. You, you can't greet him. You can't go to his house. You can't. You know, he, he, he just deals with some people, and but he's kind of focused on his work, you see. There are people like that. He's focused on his work. He's just driving his work. So from his house in this Cantanta car to Ministry of Finance, he's there with his team, he's back. Then he's talking to his friends, and he's doing his work. He comes to Parliament to deliver the budget. So this MP was telling me that it's really maybe about his personality. because And this MP was telling me that when they, when they were going to Jubilee House, they're very upset with the president. But the way in which he conducted the meeting, everybody was excited by the time the meeting was over. So personalities are different. So those of us who are against Ken, let's think and see whether perhaps it is really his personality that, that we are concerned about, not the, the delivery of the performance of his work. Not, not really that, because we've, we've showed his work. 2017, 2018, 2019, if you have anything to say about him, and you, the, which finance minister in the world would you not have something to say about in 2021, 2022? We remember Kwesi Kwate, don't we? We remember the one before him. We remember Donald Trump's elections in 2020 in America, for which Trump is still fighting and believing that they had used the whole COVID thing to get him out of power. And we're looking at Joe Biden and the criticism that he got in 2021 about the American economy. We're looking at the UK economy. We're looking at the German economy. Angela Merkel and his people, they left, and they are still being blasted and criticized. So which finance minister in the world can you pick in 2021 and say that this is plaudits? You can't find because the whole world is going through a global recession so that's that's really the point for those supporting ken that's their point for those against ken they said okay hey look at the dollar it's now at 16 then 15. he should go he should go we should go we don't like that he should go